The trade is one for one. Taylor Hall for Adam Larson. A tweet that will forever live in infamy with most Oilers fans, but perhaps more importantly, with former Oilers GM Peter Shirelli, who's had a handful of terrible trades that seem to never go his way. By now, most all know about the Hall for Larson deal and the repercussions it had for Edmonton. As although Larson did pan out to be a solid defenseman, Taylor Hall would immediately break out in New Jersey, taking home the Hart Trophy, being named league MVP, and guiding his Devils into the playoffs. There's also no doubt that this move played a major factor in Peter finally getting the boot in 2019, but there were a few other trades that might have also did him in, with another contender being the Griffin Reinhardt deal, as Shirelli would ship off both a first and second round pick to the Islanders during the 2015 draft for the struggling defenseman who failed to live up to expectations. And not only did Reinhardt provide little to no impact in Edmonton, but that first round pick ended up becoming Matt Barzell, who is the current face of the Islanders franchise. However, the trade that may have officially caused Shirelli to get fired may have been the trade that took place on November 16th, 2018, where he would ship off Ryan Strom to the New York Rangers in another one-for-one -one deal for Ryan Spooner. Now, at the time, Ryan Strom was performing at a pretty solid rate. In his first year at Edmonton, he produced 34 points, scoring 13 goals, while also posting some pretty solid underlying numbers as well. But when he began the 18-19 season flat, only scoring a goal and an assist in 18 games, Peter Shirelli immediately pressed the panic button, thus making the extremely questionable move. This also looked bad asset management-wise as well, as during the summer of 2017, Edmonton would acquire Strom for Jordan Eberle, who immediately made an impact with the Isles. And after shipping Strom off to the Rangers, Edmonton would only get 25 games out of Ryan Spooner before trading him to Vancouver for roughly 20 games of Sam Gagne. Meaning that Shirelli, after all of that, traded Jordan Eberle in 2017 for about 20 games of Sam Gagne. Shirelli's blunders show just how important asset management can really be, and how one costly move can cost a general manager their entire job, which is also the theme of today's video. And speaking of asset management, let's head to Vancouver. As in 2013, Canucks general manager Mike Gillis received heavy criticism for trading away two of Vancouver's most valuable assets. And to explain what I mean, we need to go back. Mike Gillis was actually considered a pretty good general manager, helping create the Canucks team that was one game away from winning it all back in 2011. And a big part of that run was due to the performances of Vancouver's netminders Roberto Luongo and Corey Schneider. Now, throughout the regular season, both showed flashes of excellence, and Luongo's presence in net was huge during the 2011 run. But two years later, with both of the goalies having starting potential and the team struggling to stay under the cap, Gillies was faced with a tough decision. Who do you keep? The biggest issue was that Luongo's contract seemed virtually unmovable due to his no trade clause and his massive cap hit. Even Roberto Luongo himself thought that he was also unmovable due to the deal, which then led Corey Schneider to become the odd man out, even though he was younger and seemed like the person to obviously hold on to. Well, Gillies would pull the trigger, trading Corey Schneider and Roberto Luongo in a matter of eight months. Yeah, instead of keeping one over the other, he traded away both pieces of one of the league's top pairings away. And the funny thing about it is, although it seemingly cost Gillis his job, it may have helped out Vancouver tremendously, as the 2013 first round pick they got from New Jersey in the Schneider deal turned out to become their now captain, Bo Horvat. And in the Luongo deal, which sent him back to Florida, Vancouver would receive a pretty raw prospect by the name of Jacob Markstrom, who, as of right now, well, thanks Vancouver. We're not done with the Canucks yet, however, as in 1986, another Canucks GM would pull off a crazy trade that this time actually backfired, as GM Jack Gordon would trade away a young Cam Neely and a first round pick for Barry Peterson. Now, to be fair, Peterson at the time was considered one of the best young talents at only age 25, producing back-to-back 100-point -back seasons from 1982 to 1984, helped 
helping put Barry on the map, but what Cam Neely turned into made this trade look even worse for Vancouver, as not only did Peterson begin to slow it down, but Neely would burst out onto the scene, becoming a superstar for the Boston Bruins. Glenn Wesley would be taken with that first round pick as well. And what I found extremely interesting about this deal is that Boston is still benefiting from it as of today, as over the years, big names such as Sergei Samsonov and Milan Lucic would be pieces involved in the trade tree that has recently given Boston Trent Frederick. Jack Gordon's tenure is pretty much highlighted by this blunder, as although Neely's knee injuries unfortunately cut his career short, he had a much bigger impact with Boston than Peterson did for Vancouver. Although Maple Leafs GM Floyd Smith was only around for two seasons, his impact he left on the organization lingered for decades. For all the wrong reasons. The obvious choice for the trade that got Smith fired is the Tom Curvers deal. At the time, the Leafs needed to find a stud defenseman after missing out on acquiring Quebec defenseman Randy Muller, and in an act of desperation early into the 1989 season, Smith went out and acquired defenseman Tom Curvers from the New Jersey Devils for a first round pick in 1991, the draft that was set to feature a potential generational talent in Eric Lindros. Well, Toronto wasn't that great, and Curvers didn't make much of an impact, and sure enough, that 1991 first round pick was good enough for the New Jersey Devils to select Scott Niedermeyer third overall. But perhaps the trade that really did him in was the one made on January 16th, 1991, when he would trade away defenseman Al Iafrady to the Washington Capitals for two players, one of which included Peter Zezel. Now, to be fair, Zezel did fairly well for Toronto, but giving away a player Iafrady's caliber was a huge loss. It's especially when he can do stuff like this. An ally of Brady shot over 101, 101.4 in Washington. Can he do it again here to win? Yes, 105.2, 105 miles an hour. Even though the Tom Curvers deal was a complete mess, the Afraidy deal was possibly the final nail in the coffin for Floyd Smith, getting replaced by Cliff Fletcher the following season. When doing a video like this, you know we have to end it by talking about everyone's favorite, Mad, Mad Mike Milbert, who is notorious for the massive amount of goofs he made throughout his extremely long tenure on Long Island. Now, there's a lot of deals that could be mentioned that ruined his legacy, but perhaps the one that did the most damage, including long term, was the trade made on June 24th, 2000, when Milbury would trade away both Roberto Luongo and Ole Jokinen to the Panthers for Oleg Kavasha and Matt Parrish. Now, the main thing about this deal is that Milbury did it so he could select Rick DiPietro with the number one pick, and by making that trade, it signified that the future of the Islanders was going to be in the hands of Rick DiPietro. Well, DiPietro's career would be totally derailed due to injury, as when he was able to play, he looked pretty solid. But when it came down to signing DiPietro to a new deal, from what I was able to gather, Milbury didn't agree with management's decision to try and sign DiPietro to a massive $15 million deal, which may have been why Milbury got let go, allowing Garth Snow to sign him to the deal, which obviously backfired, as seven years later, the Islanders would buy out DiPietro's contract, and he's still getting paid as of today because of it. The moral of the story, basically, boils down to one thing. Don't give up on certain players too early, and never act in desperation. Most importantly, don't trade away Roberto Luongo, because apparently, he's a general manager's worst nightmare. Bad, Bad Mike Milbury.